Welcome back. Well, in this fourth and final segment, we're going to talk about objective lens size. So why do I have a pair of binoculars here? Well, I'm going to talk about how objective lens size relates to light, so-called light gathering. It's a little bit of a it's a little bit of a misnomer. Lenses really don't gather light. You can't gather it and stick it in a box or anything like that. Um, they facilitate the entry of more light because of the size of the objective lens. It's like looking the difference between looking down a, a 22 barrel and looking down a 458 diameter barrel. The more the more open it is, the more light comes in. You know, reflect reflected within the lenses. So. That's exactly what occurs with, with uh, lenses, with objectives. Objective being the front end of your scope binoculars, uh, your scope or your binoculars. The, um, the, the, standard, the standard rule of thumb has always been, this goes back to, this goes back many, many decades, perhaps over a hundred years. Um, it was, it was always understood that a ratio of five meant that uh, you had standard, standard so-called light, I'm going to use light gathering, but that's the standard term which is used. You have standard light gathering potential with a five ratio. So your standard binoculars have always been based upon that. So seven times five equals 35. Eight times five equals 40. These happen to be, and you know, ten times five is fifty. Those are the standard, the standards that were always used in the industry for uh, binocular uh, standard light gathering, and that is that's the sort of light gathering ability that's used by. That's a very popular one used by bird watchers. Now, bird watchers are looking at what they're, they're in the woods and they're looking up at dimly, uh, you know, dimly lit. Uh, tree branches and things like that. That's an adequate size for most of your light gathering ability. That means that a scope, a rifle scope, which is powered for uh, a seven power scope, uh, 35, 35 millimeter objective is standard uh, for that particular scope. Is that not enough? light gathering ability well if it if it happens to be late in the afternoon or very very early in the morning and you you really can't see into that dim section of woods turn your power down because you've immediately changed your ratio when you turn your power down you can watch that i've i've done that in the afternoon and just by turning the power down i can all of a sudden see things brighten up just a little bit so that gets into that gets us into the second issue of is there another is there another method of uh, grading uh, scopes? Yes, there is. Five being the the five times uh, ratio is for standard uh, for standard uh, light gathering ability. It's it's perfectly it's perfectly adequate for ninety nine percent of your shooting. Certainly adequate for uh, virtually all hunting, except for those very, very early morning hours or late in the afternoon hours, or maybe looking in, you know, across a, a bright field and you're looking into the woods. Then you need to have something which is a little bit more. And simply all you have to do is turn the power down just a little bit and you increase that ratio. Back uh, many years ago, the Navy, you know, the Navy is always concerned about, uh, you know, darkness because darkness is when you know things can serious things can happen U boats could start attacking you know in at nighttime so the sailor on watch had to have binoculars that were able to uh, see as best as they possibly could <coughs> this type of binocular here is a 7 by 50 this is commonly was commonly called a marine binocular in those days uh, it's still commonly used as a marine binocular Seven power is the maximum that's usable on on board a boat because you know you're, you're, there's constant movement and anything more than seven power and you just can't find you just can't find what you're looking at is too distressing to to maintain uh, you, you know location on your target. Uh, so seven power was the popular uh, that was the standard power size for for uh, people on watch, 
And 50 millimeter, 50 millimeter, uh, they found was the uh, size objective that was required at night. I'm talking not dim light. I'm talking about at night to, uh, you know, take, to capture just whatever ambient light is in the sky, you know, from the stars or the moon or whatever, so that it would illuminate, you know, a, 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 an enemy sub, uh, you know, a, a U-boat or something like that. That was, that was the standard. So 7x50s seven by, seven by were known as uh, night binoculars. This is not the type of ratio that most hunting scopes have to have. Um, well, a lot of people say, well, I like to have as much as I can get. Be very careful about what you, what you ask for, because you might get it. When you mount a 50 millimeter lens on a rifle, you're increasing, you're, you're increasing the height of your scope off the, uh, off the uh, rifle itself. Ever since scopes became popular, following the 70s, before anything before the 70s, they were still using, you know, open sights on rifles and scopes was considered to be uh, an add-on option. Uh, any, any, any rifle that you bought up until, you know, 30 or 40 years ago still came with uh, open sights. And as a result, in order to see the open sights which are mounted low down on this uh, barrel, uh, the, the stock had to be, the, the stock had to be sculpted so that the the comb was relatively low. You'll notice that all older rifles, the scope, uh, the stock rather, sloped down uh, much more aggressively. And that's so that it would position your, your cheek weld so that you had a good cheek weld, but you could see through the, see through the open sights. That occurs with my CZ457. My CZ457 has that Bavarian stock. It's absolutely perfect for using those tangent sights where my, my, my vision my eyes are down low and looking across those uh, tangent sights. It's perfect for that. But it's really, it's really a difficult thing when I mount my scope on it and I'm trying to gain a, I can't gain a cheek weld at all because of the uh, lowness of that particular comb. It's, you, can, you can't have both. For a short period of time when, when uh, manufacturers were dealing with both, you know, Remington and Winchester and uh, Savage and everything, they started to elevate the height of their uh, rear, the rear sight and the front sight so you could have a little of both. You, they, they were raising the, the comb up somewhat moderately. It wasn't as high as these are now because these are virtually, these are made strictly for scopes now. So the, 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 the stock comb is made as high as possible to position the scope right where your eye, where your eye is with a good cheek weld. But that standard is based upon a medium height ring. That's that's what that's what comes with all your you know when you buy a Ruger you know it always comes with medium height rings. Most dealers will height will stock medium height rings uh, far more than any other height because that's exactly what people need for having most scopes. High rings you're getting above a good cheek weld for most people. You're no longer going to have a good cheek weld. You're going to be raising that scope up just enough so that you have to lift your lift your face up off the scope. I can tell you, the last thing I want to do on a long-range shot is to lose my cheek weld. I don't want to lose my cheek weld on any shot. I want that. I want my cheek to be down low and tight, and I want to be able to see those crosshairs immediately. So, assign yourself. I would really recommend, no matter what you buy, to limit your objective lens size to 36 to 40 millimeter. 40 millimeter, beyond 40 millimeter, you're getting into a higher scope. You're getting into a higher mount. And as I say, uh, this, is, this happens to be an eight power scope. So this is a 36, 36 millimeter scope. It's very close to that standard of, you know, uh, eight by 40. It's very, very close to that standard of, uh, of fives. All I have to do is just turn it down to, all I have to do is just turn it down to seven power and I'm right up there with that, 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 uh, that classic standard of fives. If it gets really dark, if, if I'm really peering into the woods, if I turn it down to, to six power, now I'm getting up to that seven standard. In other words, the seven by fifties, if you do the math, it comes out to about 7.1 is the ratio. 
basically seven to, it's a seven times, seven to one standard. So all you have to do is just simply turn this down and you'll get a sharp and clear image without losing much of your actual magnification. So that's all you have to do. I don't, I don't at all recommend that you, you know, sometimes you get a difference in scopes, um, a difference in price. Whatever manufacturer it is, uh, manufacturer it is uh, they'll offer the same exact power scope but with different size objectives. My top recommendation is to always go with the smaller, the smaller of the two objective lens sizes because you're going to have you're going to have a lighter scope, considerably lighter, and it's going to be lower on your rifle. It's going to be uh, faster and quicker moving. Everything about it is going to be fine, and you're not going to lose any. You're not going to lose light gathering ability because you always have the light gathering ability simply by turning down your 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 focal your your power ring. That's all you have to do to gather to gain more light gathering is to turn the power down a little bit and things will brighten up. If if you're in the afternoon, you go out in your you go out in your backyard and do that. Turn your turn your power ring up as you're looking at something. Maybe if you're looking at your barn door, turn your power ring down a little bit and you'll see things. It's like a rheostat. You'll see the power turn up, uh, the the, the uh, image turn up. And you're not going to lose you're not going to lose the ability to strike your target. Not at all, not at all. I, I've already spoken about what's necessary for power. One power per hundred yards is more than enough. Uh, that's that's what people have when they're using iron sight. So you know when you got two power per hundred yards, that's a that's a lot. Um, most of the most of the power that we have on these scopes is, you know, it's it's luxurious. You, you you don't need to have that kind of power in order to strike a target at any range. You know you you can shoot you can shoot. To infinite distances with uh, very low power scopes. People think that they have to, they're being sold on the notion that they have to have high power scopes. They have to have front focal, uh, front, uh, front focal planes, first focal planes. They're convinced they have to have uh, large objective lenses and they're convinced that they have to have, they have to have adjustable objectives. So I'm going to talk about objective, uh, I, I'm speaking about objective size, and this is a good time to talk about uh, objective uh, lens adjustment. Um, AO. Just as with first and second focal plane scopes, AO is not better, it's just necessary for certain power scopes. Up to, up to nine power. Uh, the parallax, the parallax is the apparent movement of a relic reticle. While it's not the real movement of the reticle, it's the apparent movement of relic reticle in relation to your eye pupil. So if you if you position your if you position your thumb out here and you don't move your thumb but you move your head from side to side, you'll notice that your thumb appears to move across the room. And it's, it's not your thumb that's moving, and it's not the room that's moving. It's the apparent movement of the reticle. Um, that your thumb is the reticle. That's what they do uh, with that's what they do with fixed power scopes. Is they adjust the, the reticle uh, parallax to be at a given place. Leupold happens to do it at 150 yards for most of uh, most of their fixed scopes. Rimfire scope, Leupold rimfire scopes. They set at 60 yards for fixed power. Some manufacturers are setting their scope reticles at 100 yards for fixed power. I don't think that that's the appropriate thing to do. They're doing that so that they can say that it, their scope is more accurate. Well, it's, that's because most people sight in at 100 yards, and you don't have any parallax at 100 yards. So yeah, if you if you have a parallax setting uh, at, at 100 yards, it may be a little bit more accurate if you're not careful. And as I've spoken before, is that is, if you're if your pupil is down the middle of the scope, there is never any parallax, no matter what your parallax setting is. If your pupil is positioned down the center of the scope, there's never any parallax. But above nine power, that's where you need to have AO. So if you happen to have a scope, which is uh, you, you purchase a scope for, for target shooting and you know, or, or varmint hunting, where you need to have a high power scope, Adjustable objective is a necessary thing that you have to have in order to correct for parallax at, at various ranges. And what occurs with parallax is also uh, is affecting your, your focal distance. 
uh, your your actual focus point. So it it ranges it ranges at uh, at, at extended ranges. Then you adjust your parallax up to adjust to that particular range. So say you're looking at, at 225 yards, you turn your ring up to 225 yards, it's not only adjusting your parallax and correcting for the parallax, the apparent movement of the reticle, but it's also focusing your scope because now what it's really doing is it's adjusting the parallax inside the scope such that the convergence of light images, light rays, fall upon your distant target at the same time that they're falling upon your crosshair. So it's correcting for your, your range, your, your uh, parallax, and it's also focusing in at the same time. So with an adjustable objective scope, when you're focused, when you're focused at 280 yards with your AO setting, or what, if it's on the, sometimes it's on the side, side mounted is the same thing, but if you adjust it for that, for that range, it's also focusing at exactly that same range too. So that's what AO does. I've spoken about what you need for power, so you can, you can readily see, you're not gonna see AO on any of my hunting scopes. It's just not gonna happen. Uh, you know, it, it's just, it's, it's extra weight too. It adds, it adds another ounce or so of weight uh, on, on an AO scope. It's not, it's simply not needed. And not only that, but the objective bell by that time has gotten up to 50, usually 50 millimeter, which is way too much uh, for a scope that I want to have on my gun. It's just too much, too much height and too much weight. So, but that's what AO is. Uh, if you need it for target shooting or for uh, varmint shooting, uh, it's the way to go. If, if, you get a, if you get a scope which is 10 power or more, you're going to have to have AO in order to uh, correct for the uh, parallax and to uh, focus, focus properly at those distances. Um, yes, and you will handicap yourself uh, if you get a if you get a ten or twelve power scope that doesn't have AO because you can get parallax. But remember what I said: as long as your as long as your eye is down down the middle of that tube, train yourself to shoot with your eye down the middle of the tube, and you're not going to have any issues. On large game, it won't make any difference because the parallax issue you're only talking in terms of small inches. You're not talking in terms of large numbers of uh, feet or anything like that. It becomes important when you're shooting at a woodchuck or a prairie dog, and it becomes very important if you're shooting at a, at a target for score. So that's it. Now you know about so-called light gathering, what you need to have for an objective lens. Keep it under 40 millimeter if you want to mount your scope with uh, medium standard ring height. Uh, you know, and and some people look at it like a one and a, a one and a half to five scope, and it's just got a, a 20 millimeter tube. Well, what's what's the point of that? You wonder, because 20 millimeter isn't going to gather much light. Well, do the math, and you'll see that at five power, uh, five times five is 25. That's a 20 millimeter tube. Uh, one inch is a 20 millimeter tube. So you're You've got more than enough power, and if you uh, more than enough light gathering, if you turn it down to uh, four power or three power, your light gathering goes way up. So that's that's the name of that game. I think I've covered I think I've covered pretty much all of it. Uh, if I can think of anything else, I'll post it pretty soon. And thanks to my Patreon donors for all the assistance that you've given me. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and uh, subscribe to me. Tell your friends about us. And uh, Benny's doing super. He was just down here a minute ago and he's having a great time, but uh, he's, waiting for, he's waiting for me to go out and have my cigar and uh, enjoy the afternoon with him. So that's what I'm gonna do. Thanks for, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and God bless.